It is day three of Summerween. I just posted my day one and two vlog. If you missed that, it'll be links in a card, link down below if you wanna go watch that first. I forgot to show you guys in that vlog that I actually painted my nails yesterday. Ignore both of my broken <laughs> pointer fingers. But I decided to do like halloween -y nails and I really like how they look. This one, not as much. I don't know if you're even gonna be able to tell. I did like a little bat sticker. Um, but it's kind of hard to see with the black nail polish, but this side I really like the little skull. Quick check-in of what we've done so far. I finished Frightmares, which is my prompt for a book with haunt in the title because I cheated and haunt is in the synopsis. I'm currently halfway through Daphne by Josh Mallerman and really, really liking it. I read to the 50% mark last night and there were a few scenes that really creeped me out. I got a little freaked out and I just went on a walk and continued listening to reception and I think I only have about an hour left of that. So my plan for today, I'm going to go inside and shower because I'm schwitzing. We're going to complete the prompt of baking a treat. I'm going to make chocolate chip cookie bars today, which I'm very excited about. I was like absolutely feral for a little sweet treat last night and I didn't have one, so I'm really excited for them. I want to finish Daphne and I want to at least start The Pain Eater by Kyle Muntz, which which I said in my last vlog um, is the book I'm most excited about this week. So here's hoping that goes well. I'm thinking about going to the pool today, but I don't know. It's like nice out right now, but it's supposed to thunderstorm later. But since moving to Virginia, I found that the weather is kind of weird. Like if it says it's gonna rain or thunderstorm, it will, but it will be for like 10, 30 minutes and then it will be really nice again. So we'll suss that out. We'll see how the weather is gonna be. And if it's nice, I'll go to the pool and I'll be able to get a lot of reading in and I'll be able to use my new Kindle. So I actually ended up finishing reception. I didn't think I was going to today, but I was just listening as I was like showering and getting ready a bit, eating some breakfast. Um, unfortunately, I think I'm gonna give it two and a half stars. If you didn't watch my vlog yesterday or you just need a little recap, quick synopsis, we are following a woman named Ainsley and she goes to her sister Shay's wedding and the family Shay is marrying into ends up being a bunch of cannibals. I don't think this was horrible. It was entertaining enough, but I think I found that I really don't like slasher books while I really enjoy slasher movies, like, hello. Um, I just don't think that type of story works for me in a book because it relies a lot on two elements I really don't like in thriller or horror, and that is survival stories and action. I just think it's, actually really boring to read both of those things. I don't know why because those are supposed to be like really high tension, uh, like heart pumping elements, but I just find them to be really boring. Like people running around trying to figure out what to do, where to hide, how to get out of this place. Um, the moments of like gore where people are being attacked and eaten, uh, I don't know why they just don't work for me on page. Speaking about people being eaten, I think I also wanted some more backstory to the cannibalistic family. Like, I just wanted more information on them. What was their deal? Why were they cannibals? Like, is this ritualistic? Is this just a cute little family tradition? Um, I wanted to know the reason why they were like this and we never got that. I'm also really confused on kind of two things that I think may be related. Both of them, I guess, would be considered spoilers. So I'll put a timestamp if you wanna, if you're interested in this and wanna skip ahead. I feel like most people probably won't go out of their way to read this after I'm giving it a two and a half star. And it had like barely any ratings on Goodreads. So I don't think many people have this sitting on their TBR. Um, so if you don't mind, here come spoilers. The first thing that I was confused by is at one point, Shay is telling Ainsley how when she was going through rehab and going through her addiction, their mother had a heart attack and they didn't tell Ainsley about it because of like what she was going through. I think they couldn't reach her or something. So they have this whole conversation and then a bit later, they have the same conversation and it's like Ainsley is finding this out for the first time again. And at first while I was listening to it, I was like, 
is this a mistake? Like, why are they repeating this whole thing and acting like it's new information? But then at the end of the conversation, it's addressed that Ainsley has heard this before. Um, like Shay is about to say something and Ainsley is like, oh, it happened here. Like, I've heard this story before. How do I know this? You've told me this before. We talked about this here. And our sister was like, no, I didn't. I've never told you this before. We never had this conversation before. And I'm so confused by that. Like, what is the explanation there? And I think it may be explained by the second thing that I'm confused by that I feel like I missed because I went on Goodreads and I was reading some reviews and a lot of people were saying that they didn't like the ending, the reveal of the ending, and that they think the trope of it was all a dream is really old and tired. And I'm like, was this all a dream? Like, is that why that happened? I, <laughs> I did not pick up on that. Like I tuned it out, I missed it. I'm very confused. And I was gonna go back a bit and re-listen to the final few chapters, but to be honest, I really don't care enough to do so. So I don't think I'm gonna be going to the pool. and I liked it. I think I'm gonna give it three and a half stars. It reminded me a lot of My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones and then It and Carrie by Stephen King, um, which is funny because I DNF'd two of those books and gave the other one I think two stars, but I liked this a lot more, but I can still see um, similar writing styles throughout all of them and also some similar themes, narrative style, elements. So I think if you really like those books, you should try this out and you may really like it as well. But even if you didn't like those books, like I didn't, I would still recommend trying this out, which I guess isn't helpful because then who am I recommending this book to? Um, I really liked a lot of parts of this and then other parts I really didn't. I really liked overall, like what the story was saying and trying to do and different elements in it. Um, I liked Daphne as a villain of sorts I guess. Her as a villain kind of reminded me as Pennywise because all of the characters that we get perspectives from have different experiences with her um, and everyone in the town is kind of told not to talk about her, not to think about her even because it makes her more powerful and there were some really good creepy scenes. How this reminds me of Carrie is it is definitely a coming of age story. Um, my only issue with it, I liked where Kit ended up but I just wish I got to go on more of the journey with her, even though we were reading from her perspective for most of the book. I feel like I didn't really get to watch her grow and change and realize things and accept things. Um, it just kind of was told to me in the end that she had grown and changed and came of age. And I think that's due to the narrative style being a little strange. I don't exactly know how to describe it. After I finished the book, I was just like, sitting there staring at the ceiling for a few minutes trying to think of a way to describe this to you but I I really don't know how and I'm sorry about that. I think the best way I can describe it is it almost felt like this whole story was being told to me rather than me experiencing these things in the moment. Me experiencing someone having a run-in with Daphne. I was just being told like third person about this experience with Daphne, if that makes sense. There are also some questions I still have that I feel like weren't really answered that I wish I got a bit more on. Um, but other than those things, I did enjoy my time reading it. I had a good time reading it. I liked a lot of elements in it. And this being my first Josh Mallerman book, I would definitely read from him again. Let me know if you've read a few things from him, like what I should try next. I was planning on reading Goblin from him. I think that came out last year, but it had so many bad reviews. I ended up taking it off my TBR. But this book actually takes place in the same world as Goblin. Like, I think Goblin is 
the town next door to this so it's mentioned a few times so I'm kind of intrigued to try it out but I should remember the bad reviews I, I feel like I shouldn't give it a try oh I also made my cookie bars I showed when I was making them I was gonna do a little taste test with you but then I just ended up doing a taste test on FaceTime with my boyfriend so sorry you missed that riveting content but they were delicious I will put the recipe down below if you want to make them they were really fucking good I'm gonna go have another one so here's where we're at I was planning on starting the pain eater tonight that's gonna be my book I read in the dark so I was gonna read it later tonight um but I just realized I'm like almost completely through my TBR. Now I have one book left on my TBR and we have, what, four days left. And the one book I have left is a novella, so I will probably finish that in one sitting, in one day. And to be honest, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Um, I think that's all I've read so far in July because I'm doing another video as well. And then I did this readathon. And I'm actually kind of in the mood for a thriller, which I wasn't planning on reading for this readathon. I told y'all if I finished the four books I had planned, I had a fifth one lined up. This is not that, but I'm just in the mood for a thriller and I'm really in the mood for The Push by Ashley Audrain. I think this actually isn't even really a thriller. It's marketed as such, but I've heard people say that you should go into it thinking of it more as like just a psychological general fiction sort of story. I don't think it's really spooky or scary at all, but I don't know. I mean, it's not gonna fulfill any prompts, but once I finish that novella, all of the prompts are completed. So it doesn't really matter. And I'm just kind of in the mood for a change of pace. And I just kind of want to pick this up. <laughs> Happy day four. It is many hours later. I have woken up a bit. When I first spoke to you, it was like 7.30 a.m. and I was I was struggling. Ignore my weird background. Um my air conditioning sucks and it's currently 80 degrees out there so I have a window unit in here and I just have to hang out in here because it's way too damn hot so I have like a little mat on the floor <laughs> and this is where I hang out. I'm also really hating my hair today. I was like let's be cute like I put on a little athleisure outfit. Let's do a slicked back bun sort of deal and I posted this on Instagram but with a slicked back bun I feel like there's a fine line between stylish like cute fashion forward and little boy and i think i'm straddling that line heavily um i also kind of feel like an acorn with my brown top so i don't know i'm just not vibing with anything today but that is besides point as i said i'm off of work i skipped my lunch so i could leave an hour early because i just didn't want to be there anymore <laughs> i was really struggling today i'm so freaking tired i've been sleeping horribly the past like week or so i've been having a really hard time sleeping and i feel like it's compounding and catching up to me my game plan for today i'm going to edit this video first as much as i can and then i'm going to start reading um i didn't make it too far in the push last night i only made it to chapter three which is page 15 um but i'm liking it so far the first chapter especially really intrigued me all i knew about this is we are following a mother who has a daughter and really doesn't connect with her really doesn't feel that love for her and obviously feels guilt for this um, but then she has her son and really feels that connection, really loves her son. So I think she starts to believe that she's not really the problem, but her daughter is. Her daughter's like evil or something. But the first chapter is kind of like the end of the story, which I love. The woman, what is her name? Blythe? Blythe? How do you pronounce that? Blythe. 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 <laughs> I don't know. B. She's sitting in her car watching this family through the window. And then you find out that the girl in this family is her daughter. So her daughter is no longer living with her and is with a different family. And like the end of the first chapter, she says, I pick up the stack of paper beside me on the passenger seat and feel the weight of my words. I've come here to give this to you. This is my side of the story. So I imagine now we're gonna hear her side of the story. And I just love at the beginning of a story when we kind of know the end and then we're just finding out how we got there. So I'm intrigued to continue. I don't know exactly what my like reading plans, goals are for the day. I don't know if I wanna try and finish this today um, or if I want to just read this for a bit and then maybe later tonight I will read The Pain Eater because then after I finish The Pain Eater, 
all of my prompts will be completed and then I can just move on to whatever else I guess. I don't know, we'll just start reading this and see how I feel if I got really wrapped into the story. Maybe I'll just want to read this all today. So I'm just under 50% of the way through the push and I'm loving this. When I first picked this up, I was laughing because a couple hours before I started reading it today, I watched a pregnancy announcement from this YouTuber I really like, Possessed by Horror. Um, and it gave me a little bit of baby fever, okay? I texted my partner and I was like, I want a baby. And then a few hours later, I'm 40 pages into this and I texted him again, I'm like, I don't want a baby. This is kind of reminding me of that book that I can't remember the name of, I will put it up here, um, where there was this whole discourse, like a group of people said it was a thriller, a group of people said it wasn't. And I think this is similar because this shit is scary to me, okay? This woman is really happy with her husband. They decide they want to extend their family and have a baby and they're really excited about doing so. But then when they have the baby, he's still excited and happy and like loving his life being a dad. And she, as I said before, just doesn't connect with this child, doesn't love being a mother, pretty much actively hates being a mother and all of the shitty things that come along with it. like. I think any parent can admit there's shitty things that come with being a parent, but that the good parts of it overweigh those, but she's not feeling any of the good parts. First of all, I have a huge fear of making big decisions that cannot be reversed, exhibit A, having a child. And second of all, I'm specifically really scared of having a child and then regretting it because I just feel like that is that's the worst big decision that you can make that can't be reversed. And she's dealing with things that, again, I really fear that are like in my con box for having children. Um, one of them being like becoming a mother and having that be the biggest part of my identity. The world only first seeing me as a mother and then second seeing me as my own person and losing the time to spend with myself, losing parts of myself, losing the time to spend with my partner because she talks about this big gap that is kind of forming between them. Both because their lives are just different now and busier and they have another person that they're caring for and is now a part of their lives, but also because she is expressing her fears to her husband and also acting a bit strangely like after the kid wakes up from a nap and is screaming crying she just kind of like puts her headphones in and continues to write and leaves her there for a while so you know i i get his um i get his anger with her a bit as of right now this is giving me vibes of night bitch and baby teeth because there are definitely like creepy child vibes in here i think i really lowered my expectations just because i've heard so many people say like this isn't a thriller this isn't creepy this is just like a psychological drama and I guess I wouldn't say creepy, but like the kid is definitely doing some things that um, are a little questionable. We're also getting some chapters from Blythe's mother and her mother in like the 1960s. So when Blythe's mother was a child. Um, so we see her relationship with her mother growing up and I'm assuming it's kind of to show why Blythe had a difficult relationship with her mother and how that came to be, talk about generational trauma and things like that. I don't want to speak too soon, but this feels like it could be a five star and I'm really hoping it'll be a five star because I was like thinking that and I was like, oh, what's the last book I gave five stars? So I took a little peruse through my spreadsheet. <laughs> this is the saddest thing I've ever heard. So I had one five star read in June. It was a reread when I reread People Meet on Vacation. And then before that, my last five star, I gotta scroll all the way up, guys. My last five star was in February. And like, obviously everything I'm reading isn't just total shit. I've had some four and four and a half stars, but I just, I want a book that I'm obsessed with, that I just like can't stop thinking about. And I had a couple of those way in the beginning of the year and I still haven't stopped thinking about them, but I want another book to obsess over. So let's put good vibes into this book. I am gonna continue reading tonight, but I do just wanna get this edited and uploaded for the morning, so I'm gonna call it here. And you will see me back on 
Friday, I think, for days five, six, and seven. Um, again, let me know how your summer week is going so far, what books you've been finishing, what books you've been liking, what books you've planned for the rest of the week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!